Funding for this program is provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of the complete line of Cajun King Seafood Seasoning Mixes and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Additional funding is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Anytime, any place In Louisiana, we're really cooking. Hi, I'm Chef John Falls, welcoming you to the bayous of South Louisiana. Today, Cajun and Creole cooking holds a prime spot in the world of international cuisine, and I would love for you to know a little bit about it. So why not sit back, relax, and join me and some of my friends as we cook up another great taste of Louisiana. and welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. I'm Chef John Falls, and today we're doing crab cooking, crab cooking Louisiana style. We're going to do about three or four different dishes using all of the beautiful crab meats available to us in South Louisiana. And as a special treat, a little bit later on, I've got a great friend of mine coming over to visit. Not only is he a great politician, but Mayor Curtis Jobert from Eunice, Louisiana, is also a fabulous cook. And we're going to talk a little bit about how good cooking and politics goes just hand in hand in South Louisiana. But let's talk a little bit about crabs. Do you realize that in this world there's over 4,500 different species of edible crabs? That's right, 4,500. Here we see, that's a female crab. You see the little red fingernails painted on the end. You can always tell the female crab from the top by looking at those red fingernails. The crabs are right here in brackish water, right? I guess this is Lake Moripaw, right on top of an old oyster bed. You can always catch a lot of nice fresh crabs. Here they're being graded into bushel baskets because the select crabs will always bring a much better price than just some of those little weaklings or small crabs. Once they're selected uh, out into the different sizes, of course, they're weighed. And any good morning, you can find those crab fishermen going out. Look at this old dugout pirog, just a little dugout boat uh, carrying three of those wire crab traps. There's no question where these crabs are going, absolutely. Once they get into the bushel basket, there's only one place for that crab to go. Empty it out of the crab basket, into the bushel, and into that big steaming pot that the Cajuns have to fire up to boil those beautiful crabs on a nice Saturday afternoon with lemon and pepper, bay leaves, salt, all the great spices of South Louisiana. Just another social event of the Cajuns, the boiled crabs. And I'm going to tell you, I love boiled crabs, but I love any kind of crab cooking in Louisiana. It's interesting to note that it wasn't until the Civil War that people started to eat crabs in South Louisiana and the rest of the country. Only the Cajuns and the Indian cultures around South Louisiana realized that crabs were a delicacy. Yeah, and I guess they kept that secret long enough before somebody else found out all about it. Let me, let me tell you the different types of crab meats that we have. I know you can see this beautiful big platter of crab here, and there's about five distinct different varieties of meat uh, from those 4,500 different crabs. Here we have just back fin meat. It's the white crab meat that's kind of just little pieces. It's not full and formed. Here is the crab claw meat, the jumbo uh, brown claws that's just full of meat. I, I think probably the tastiest meat in the crab. Here's the claw meat that's been deboned right off of the claws, and you can see it's just a really nice meat for flavor. But of course, the pearls of Louisiana, we call these the pearls, the jumbo lumps of Louisiana blue crab, and nothing is costlier in Louisiana seafood than this little Jew right here. The, the claw crab, the big jumbo crab meat, the back fin meat, all of these are just delicacies in Louisiana kitchens. And one of the things that I really like about crab is that it gives us a lot of different possibilities in the kitchen, a lot of variety when we think about crabs. We actually stuff them, we'll broil them, we'll, uh, as you saw a minute ago, boil them, we'll bake them, we'll pan saute lump crab meat, and all these different kind of dishes gives us a real good possibility in crab cooking. When we want to catch them, you saw those old traps. Let me show you a Cajun trap. This is the way we caught crabs as a young kids growing up on the bayous. We had a little 
string and we'd pull the nets right up out of the water. Look at here, I've got three already right in my kitchen floor. That's how many crabs we have. This is an old Cajun net. There's two wire rims and the net plaited all around the outside and normally baited with a little piece of chicken leg or something like that dropped right into the water. Sometimes I would see the Cajuns actually take a little string like this with a chicken neck or something tied on the end right down into the water and would get a lot of crabs. So just in case you ever want to know how to catch them, this is it for us right here. I'll move these out of the way while we get started. The first uh, dish that I want to do for you today is called crab meat au gratin, crab meat au gratin. And the au gratin, uh, I guess, came to us from France in the very early days. They would gratiné a lot of different things, like creme brulee, the great dessert, would go into the broilers to be gratinéed. Of course, it's a white sauce. And that's a little strange in Louisiana cooking because the Cajuns are normally uh, used to making the dark brown roux. And why we retained the white roux and the white sauce in crab meat au gratin, I really don't know other than to say it must have been so tasty that we decided to reserve it in our cuisine. So I'm going to fire up my black iron pot, which of course I love to cook in the black iron uh, skillets and the black iron pots because they retain that heat so well. I'm going to put a little bit butter or margarine. This is a butter flavored oil, but it's a, it's a very light, low fat oil. This old Molly oil bottle. Isn't that, isn't that great? I love these, uh, these old bottles. Now, every time Cajuns and Creoles cook anything, of course, we're looking for flavor and a lot of flavor. So we're going to start with a little bit onions down into the pot. We're making crab meat au gratin. We're going to put a little celery. You notice I'm not measuring anything. And that's another thing that us Cajuns are famous for, never measuring a thing. We just kind of throw it into the pot. And however we feel, we have to, if it's, it's got to look right for us. And if it looks right, it's going to taste right. Now into that, garlic. A lot of garlic in all of our agratons or those other good dishes of South Louisiana cooking. Now I'll stir those seasonings around because we're looking for fresh seasoning flavor. There's a big difference between seasoning and spice. This is seasoning, vegetable seasoning. Now, of course, color. We're always looking for that color. So we're going to put red bell pepper. Now, none of these are hot peppers. These are all sweet peppers. I'm going to put the golden pepper of Louisiana right down into the pot. So again, a lot of color. And then the crab meat. Now, for the flavor, I'm looking for a great flavor in the uh, gratin. So I'm going to use the most flavorful of the crab meats, and that is the claw meat. And I showed you just a minute ago the claw meat, but I want to show you what, how we get it packaged in these little one-pound containers, all uh, completely picked of the bone. And I'm going to sprinkle a bunch of it down right into the pot because I want this crab meat to just break apart as it hits the bottom because that's where the flavor is going to come from, right down into the dish. And you'll see that I'll add a lot more crab meat just a little bit later into this uh, dish. Stir the crab meat into the vegetable seasonings. And this is a crab meat au gratin white sauce. And it's basically the same ingredients as we would do in a corn soup or a bisque. Basically the same thing. It's all white sauce based. And the only difference between a bisque and soups and things like that is the area of the country you come from. They're all basically the same. Now I have to thicken this. So as the Creoles would have done many years ago, I'm going to dust just a little bit flour down into the butter, because this is going to form a butter roux, right down into the crab meat vegetable mixture. And I'll put this out of the way. And I'll mix the flour right down into the butter. You can see how the flour immediately picks up all of the oils in the pot. And that's very, very important, because we don't want any oils or butters floating on top of this crab meat dish. And then, of course, we have to create our sauce. We're going to do that with heavy whipping cream. Don't sacrifice the dish if you don't want to use cream. Just go ahead and uh, use skim milk or use yogurt and skim milk or pasteurized skim milk. But I'm using heavy whipping cream. I don't want to get run out of Louisiana. Got to use these good, rich dishes here. A little bit cream into the dish. And of course, just add a little bit at a time because the flour will really start to create the uh, thick sauce in the bottom, and as we, add the hot cr uh, as we add the cream into the hot pot, the sauce will begin to develop. And you can see just how nice those colors are and how thick this sauce is going to come together in the pot. Again, a little bit more cream, and then I'm going to flavor it 
with salts and peppers and just a little bit nutmeg because you want to have nutmeg naturally uh, in any white sauce, in, including Louisiana white sauces. How nice and thick that is. You can see the consistency of the au gratin. I'll lower that fire just a little bit and then a little pepper. I'm using cracked black pepper, a little salt. I'm going to put a touch of that good Louisiana hot sauce to kind of spice it up just a little bit. Stir that in. And then some nutmeg, just a touch to give it that great, uh, uh, nice, flavorful, aromatic spice and a touch of sherry. We always like to add a little touch of sherry to our crab meat or gratins. And then as I put it together, you're going to see just how pretty a dish this is. I'm going to let this, I would let this cook for about 15 or 20 minutes, uh, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you quickly how to put it together because it really is a nice presentation. I'm going to use this pretty little red skillet. I'm going to get some of these jumbo lumps of crab, about a handful of them, put it right down into the bottom of this little baking pan. This is a little porcelain baking pan. We want a lot of it. And then I'm going to ladle this nice sauce au gratin, which also has crab meat, which also has all of the wonderful seasonings of Louisiana. Look how nice that looks. Right over the crab. And then to gratin it or put the gratin uh, on the outside of it, of course, we're going to need cheese. And we'll swirl this around into the pan. You can see how pretty that's going to be. Swirl that around into the pan just like this so it just coats all those beautiful lumps. And then cheese. I've got grated cheddar cheese going right on top of the crab meat au gratin. And then, of course, we have to go again looking for that color. Fresh carrots, fresh red cabbage for those pretty colors, and then a little touch of parsley. Isn't that a beautiful dish? Crab meat au gratin from the bayous of South Louisiana using the jumbo lump crab meat from the blue crab. So I'm going to take this and put it right out of the way there because we're going to throw that in the oven just a little bit later. Now I'm going to move this to the back burner while I take out another black iron skillet because I want to do another dish that's just really a tradition here in South Louisiana. And that dish is devil crabs or stuffed crabs. I'm going to begin the same way. Just a little bit butter down into the bottom of the pan. I'm going to put a little bit butter into the black iron skillet and get it nice and hot here. Because the crab, the devil crabs is probably the forefather in this nation of what we like to think of as crab meat patties or crab cakes all over the rest of the nation. The Cajuns in South Louisiana started this tradition over 200 years ago where we would actually take the fresh crab meat and mix it with a lot of seasonings and into the crab shells rather than throwing the shells out after we ate the nice boiled crabs. So I want to show you how we in Louisiana uh, answer the call to the crab cakes of the rest of the, uh, the country. Again, we start, as I say, black iron skillet. We put a little bit of butter or oil or any light oils. You can use olive oil or any of those things. And again, same way, we're going to go into the skillet with a little bit onions because we have to start all of our dishes the same. Celery, great celery, bell pepper, and then again, the color because this is going to be a stuffing in the center of a nice crab shell. The yellows, and these could, we could put banana peppers in it. We like to put the orange banana peppers in this dish to give it a really, really nice look sauteing all of that around. See how nice those flavors come to, those colors come together to create flavor in the pot. And then garlic again. We're going to start basically the same way we did with the au gratin to make the devil crabs or stuffed crabs of Bayou Country, Louisiana. Saute the garlic in. And for the stuffed crabs, we're going to use claw crab meat only because the claw crab meat is so flavorful that this dish gave us a good use for the less expensive claw crab meat. Now, of course, I encourage you to use king crab or snow crab or even some of the surimi products that you can find around the country today is a great substitute for this particular dish. Into that, the claw crab. Look how nice and pretty this is. I'm going to mix all of that down into the 
onions and celery and bell pepper. You can imagine how much flavor is coming together already in this black iron skillet. And you can even come in and put more of any particular seasoning that you like. If in your, uh, if in your neighborhoods or in your city, a particular spice is indigenous to that area, go ahead and put it into the crab cakes. I know there's mayonnaise and white sauces and everything else that would go into this but not in Louisiana. We want a real hearty crab taste. So once all of these things come together, I'm gonna hold it in place by adding breadcrumbs to the dish. So I'm gonna put breadcrumbs in, and this is seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. And the seasoned Italian breadcrumbs will give the dish great, great flavor with the Italian herbs and spices in the breadcrumbs, but yet, won't make the stuffing too bready. So you want to take uh, care as you add the breadcrumbs to make sure that there's not too much bread in the dish, only enough to pick up all the butters and oils, which is what I'm gonna do. Right this minute, I add just a touch more because I still see some butter floating around the bottom of that pan. And then we have to season. Again, a touch of cracked black pepper. And I use cracked black pepper instead of white or cayenne because naturally, uh, the crack has a lot more flavor. It's, it's an aromatic spice. It's not as hot a spice as uh, uh, the cayennes or the white peppers. Cracked black pepper is my favorite. Now, once this all comes together, seasoned nicely, you can see how pretty the colors are, just the way a stuffing should look, whether in South Louisiana or anywhere else around the country. In Maryland or one of these other cities that's famous for the crab cakes, they would add a little mayonnaise or a little white sauce and uh, breadcrumbs to form the patty. But here in South Louisiana, we're gonna take a couple of these pretty crab shells, which I already have right here on the platter. And then I'll take the stuffing out of my black iron skillet right into the shells, which have been cleaned, obviously very well cleaned. And once I stuff the crab stuffing, or devil crab as we call it, right into the shells, you can imagine what a nice presentation this is gonna make right out of the oven as we take them and throw them in just to brown the top for a second. So I'll put a couple of them here. And then again, we'll take time to put a little more color on it, a little of the purple cabbage, and then a little breadcrumbs right on top to make sure that when they come out of the oven, they'll come out with a nice brown color right on top. What a beautiful dish from South Louisiana, devil crab or stuffed crab, as we call it, from the bayous of South Louisiana. I'll put this out of the way and make sure those are ready for the oven in just a second. Now, a minute ago I told you that I had a great, great friend from South Louisiana, a guy who knows a little bit about politics, but a guy who knows a lot about cooking, Mayor Joubert from Eunice. And Hey, bonjour, bonjour. Man, bonjour. Do I smell hey, man, man, I've I'm been thinking. cooking some boudin here. I don't think you get this around the bayou. Oh, look, I, I, look, I can get boudin, but I tell you what, I can't get the boudin of Eunice. You know, one of the things I talk about all the time, Mayor, is that in the uh, in around the river area of Louisiana, we're we have a different culture from the prairie or the inlands of all Louisiana. All together, but a little different. Yeah, right. a little bit different. All and, from the same country. <laughs> and boudin is one of those things because. Boudin, even though it originated in France, there was white boudin, or boudin blanc, there was red boudin, boudin noir. In South Louisiana, we mix rice into the pork and uh, ground pork and seasonings and stuff it into a casing, highly spiced, and then we'll poach it in a uh, boiling liquid to get it nice and hot, and then we'll eat this. You know, uh, where I'm from, we eat donuts every Saturday morning. Oh, no, where no, you're no, from. no, in the Prairie Cajun <laughs> capital, Eunice. Every Saturday morning, everybody stops for a boudin break, and even the surgeons quit operating about that time. <laughs> That's how important it is to the welfare of the Cajuns back home, and it's a great dish, and uh, everybody just loves it. Well, that's what, that's what I hear. I knew that there was a great tradition. I wanted to bring you some for this. Some people and, use it as dessert, actually. And I appreciate, so it. I appreciate it, too. And we're going to eat that just a little bit. Man. Isn't that nice? That's oh, a that's devil, devil crab. Let me really ask good. you something. I know you've served in the Louisiana legislature. You've served in the school system in Louisiana. And now you're one of the mayors of a great little town, Eunice, Louisiana. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me ask you something. What's the, the, the importance and the role between food and politics in Louisiana? I know there's got to be a great tradition there somewhere. Well, it's amazing. Back home, if you want to run for public office, the first thing you better do is either know how to cook or you better hire you some chefs <laughs> and get your Cajun band because I'll tell you, you have to do it. 
it's a it's a historically sort of a, a social outing because back in our you know the early times people didn't travel very far and when one of the saviors would come as i said call him a guy like huey long and people would put a black pot make a big sauce pecan or a crab a dish or what have you and then people would just flock and listen to the speeches and it's it's lived it lives on because even today at election time when a sound truck goes around advertising that there is a campaign coming on then the chickens run for cover because they know there's a barbecue coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's and that's really true. a traditional thing back home. You have to feed the, uh, a little supper and the talk. And play you know, as, as a young guy growing up in Louisiana, I can remember so well, like on a Saturday, hearing those sound trucks coming in, knowing full well that it was a political campaign, but even but knowing even more that there was going to be good food in well, some black pot. So you're, yeah. so you're right, exactly oh, yeah. right. Eunice, Louisiana, one, one of the towns that I think is just untouched by the outside world. We're still having a great, great Cajun culture there. Uh, Looks pretty good. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> One of the things that I like about your town is the Mardi Gras. You know, y'all have that great uh, Mardi, Mardi Gras. Gras. You know, so many people think of Mardi Gras in Louisiana as a big carnival in New Orleans. Certainly, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the best known in, in, in the world, probably. But back home, we still go back to the European custom of going out, dressing with the coffee shawls, the masks, the old-time uh, purple and gold uh, sack uh, costumes and uh and they go out in the morning about two three hundred strong they hit the trail and they go out and get the ingredients for a communal gumbo that takes place after the run so it's, it's really something that's uh draws thousands of people in the area the prairie region of, of where i'm from in the mamu church point Eunice area that's where uh basil that's where the traditional mardi gras that's lives it on began, it, it's right? really something to see and we have the cook offs everything we do in the little town of Eunice is uh culturally pure because we want people to come to Eunice to see the real thing. Uh, well, and, 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 and taste and, the real food, and, you know, the, and I the dark talk, gravies. I want to talk just a little bit more about Eunice, but before we do that, we have to get started on a little crab oh, meat dish that I want man. you to help me oh, with. If, yeah. th we're going to make a marinated crab claw, so if you pull, check some of those out for dry claws, I'll quickly, oh, make, a, beautiful. I'll quickly oh. make a sauce. We're going to begin the sauce by putting in a little olive oil. Now this is going to be a marinated dish. We're going to take the crab claws and put them into the marinating liquid and normally let them sit overnight to pick up all of the great flavors that we're going to introduce into the pot. However, isn't those beautiful? Oh, man. Uh, how, however, there's a lot of different uh, uh, marinades and I know y'all have some different ones where you're yeah. from, but this is a little oil and red wine vinegar. Do y'all marinate crab claws in Eunice? Oh, yes, we do. We fry them, we marinate them. It's, it's, there's a lot of ways we ought to like it. You know? We yeah. love good food. Well, that's it. That's important. And, and in Louisiana, there's all the different cultures that will add anything into the pot. In this marinade, I'm adding red bell pepper. I'm doing yellow bell pepper. I'm going to put some mushrooms into it. Some mushrooms right down into the pot. I think I want to swap this with the boudin. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you're going to get some of this. I'm going to put some of the fresh herbs. I've got some fresh thyme here. And I'm going to put some of those great thyme leaves down into it. And then, of course, basil, some good basilico. You didn't have to go out of state to get this. No, Indeed, no, no. Hey, that's the, hey, that's the, the real great, thing in Louisiana. What a great state we have here. So... So bountiful in all of these uh, seafood. A lot of dishes. things that a lot of things that very few cultures have, we yeah. can find an abundance of here in South Louisiana. That's for sure. Now, what I've done is into the marinating bowl here. I've added oil. I can put a little bit more red wine vinegar. What we're looking for is some great, great seasonings uh, into the pot. Some great flavorings. I'm going to put some thyme. Uh, I put fresh thyme. Put a little bit more of the dried thyme and a little bit of the dried basil right here. And Mayor, why don't you give me one of those leaves in that little hole right there? That's a fresh bay leaf. Throw it right into the bowl there. And then we're going to take the crab claws, if you would, and dump oh, them right these down. These are great A's. I, Isn't that nice? Oh, I'll tell you, beautiful. And we'll dump them right into the bowl right here because we would let this marinate, as I say, for about eight hours. But today, since the mayor and I love crab claws, I can guarantee you we're going to get right into this bowl in uh, just a couple minutes. You know... Let me ask you a question here. Do you know anybody who could get me some front row seats at the Liberty Theater in Eunice when they have all that great Cajun music every Saturday? Well, every Saturday night, you know, even the mayor has a hard time getting in. Sometimes <laughs> we lock the door sometimes at 5. It's, uh, every Saturday night, you know, it's the Grand Ole Opry of Cajun music. We have a living recipe corner, a lot where we go over these same uh, beautiful dishes here. 
and uh, have a Cajun humorous. It's uh, worldwide known, and it's packed house. We've renovated an old theater there, John, and uh, people just flock in from all over the world, or all the, the uh, big national television crews, reporters have been there, and I, I'll guarantee you, though, but if you try to come and bring your family, because it's family-oriented, Ryan. I guarantee you, I'll get you a seat. Might even get you on the program and give you one of the, one of these fantastic recipes. Well, well, well look, I'll take you up on that. Now, once the, once it's marinated, I'll take the crab claws and pour it right down with the marinating liquid right into this nice old wooden bowl that's a couple hundred years old here in the bayous. And I tell you, why don't you grab a hold to one of those wow. and bite into it? And I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate oh, you coming pleasure, by. Time man. flies yes. just oh, like really this is. when you're in the kitchen. And I want to just tell you that I want you to come on back and visit with us next time as we continue to cook up some of these great tastes of Louisiana. Right now, we're going to eat some crab claws. Bye-bye. Oh. Funding for this program was provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Bruce's yams and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Additional funding is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Anytime, any place in Louisiana, we're really cooking. The Companion Cookbook to a Taste of Louisiana is available for $22.95. The Evolution of Cajun and Creole Cuisine by Chef John Fulce features recipes and food history behind Louisiana's cuisine. This 352-page cookbook contains over 250 recipes, including those from this show. To order, call 1-800-973-7246 or write to the address on your screen.